Hey everyone, welcome. With the introduction of the new SRAM T-Type transmissions, they didn't just introduce three different cassettes, but they also introduced a new way of manufacturing their cassettes. I have the XX and the XO with me today. I also have an old XO1. Let's take a closer look at these. And I'm gonna start by answering a couple of questions that I already got about these two cassettes. The darker colored one is the XO, the other shinier one is the XX. And one of the questions was whether the XO is made entirely out of steel, just like the Shimano Dior 6100. And the answer is no, this is not made out of steel. Actually, SRAM does not have any of the current T-Type cassettes made entirely out of steel. At least the largest cog, the 52, is still manufactured out of aluminum, just like they had it with the previous generation cassettes. The second question that came my way was directly related to the weight of these cassettes. And just for comparison, this is a 10 to 50 cassette, the old style, 254 grams. Here's the XO, so the one that has the darker finish, comes up to 379 grams. And surprise, surprise, the XX comes up to the same, or actually two grams heavier, so there's no major difference in weight between the XX and the XO cassettes T-Type. In order to give us the lightest cassette in their lineup, the XXSL, SRAM actually employed three aluminum cogs, just like the XTR9100. But why don't we take a closer look at the design of these cassettes? Because as I mentioned at the beginning, these are fairly different than what they've done in the past. With the exception of the cheapest SX and NX, the Eagle cassettes were built with an aluminum cog, the largest 50 or 52 was aluminum. And for the X01 and XX1, we had this X dome design, all these 11 gears being pretty much machined from one large piece of steel. This process was very expensive, hence their cassette pricing overall. And again, on this view, you can see the large aluminum cog that is pretty much pinned here to the X-Dome 11 cogs. The new cassettes still use the X-Dome idea from 10 all the way up to this ninth cog which is the 32 tooth. However, if you look carefully at the next three cogs, you're gonna see pins going through them and they talk about a lightweight aluminum carrier well, the aluminum carrier is actually the big 52 tooth cog. Again, if you look carefully here, you're gonna see aluminum, then you're gonna see the second and third gear pinned directly to it. Finally, the entire aluminum carrier, meaning the last three cogs are pinned to the X dome or to the first nine gears that are very similar to what they've done ever since we had the 11 speed cassettes or when they launched the one by in 2013. Identifying the cassette is fairly simple based on the finish. Otherwise, if you look carefully see here, in case of the XO, this is definitely T-type 520%, T-type chain only. And this is the XX1295. XX only has the logo up front. But here on the back, you can clearly see this is an XX1297. Another thing that clearly identifies these new cassettes from any others is the presence of that red marker right inside of the X dome. That signifies the seventh gear or the setup gear, like SRAM calls it. And that is actually the only cog in this entire cassette that is not using a narrow Y profile. So if for the first generation Eagle, we only had the 42 and the 50 or 52 tooth narrow wide profile, the new cassettes actually involve that throughout with the exception of this cog right here. If you look carefully, it is visible even on the 10 tooth cog. Look, that's the wide, that's the narrow, it continue on. And what you get up here where the stamped metal cogs are it's even more obvious and you see these not only the narrow wide profile but you have the nicely arranged shift ramps all over the cassette because 
they are trying to give you a very good smooth shifting even under power something that shimano has provided to us with the hg plus but if shimano was able to provide us with that smoother up shifts under power by using pure mechanical means SRAM had to involve not just the narrow wide tooth profiles on the cassette but also what they call it cassette mapping which is firmware on the derailleur believe it or not we'll talk a bit more about that when i do the deep dive on the new derailleurs so what do you guys think advantage SRAM that needs electronic shifting for it or shimano uh, let me know in the comments below. But where I think SRAM has Shimano beat is their approach to the e-bike market. You're looking at the XO and XX. Both of these are e-bike ready. Shimano for their e-bikes, they have an 11 speed link glide technology. Look it up. Cassettes are super heavy. They only have an XT and so on and so forth. Going against SRAM is the fact that these cassettes only work on bikes that use the SRAM UDH because those are the only frames that would make room for the new derailleurs. By the way, why is there a price difference between the XX and the XO? As you can see up to this point, these cassettes are almost identical. What SRAM says is that the metal that's used here on this cassette is of a lesser grade compared to XX and also that the coating is not as durable on the XO versus the XX. So what do you guys think? Is there a problem with these drivetrains only working on frames that have the UDH standard? I don't know the answer, but what I do know is that SRAM is relying more and more on their new standards just to make their drivetrains or transmissions unique. For installation, they used the good old XD driver that they've introduced with their 11-speed 1x drivetrains. However, knowing exactly where that XD driver stops, they were able to push the cassettes outwards towards the frame 2.5 millimeters. And like I mentioned in my video about the chain, does that make room for an extra gear right here at the end of the cassette? I don't have answers for that, guys. I'm just speculating here, but it's definitely a possibility when you think about the new chain being exactly the 4.9 millimeters that we already have with the 13 speed Campagnolo drivetrain. So what do you think? Let me know. All right, a couple more things that I heard or read about at the initial launch. And the first one was that the new cassette is actually wider overall than the outgoing Eagle 12 speed. Cassette is definitely not wider. Here's your 46.5 millimeters of the old Eagle and the new eagle cassette sits at 4607 so they are definitely not wider and one last thing i read was that the teeth of the new cassette are actually fatter thicker bigger than the old and that's how sram gets the longevity out of these new drive trains with the narrower chains overall that's hard to believe i'm just going to measure the thickness of that largest cog which is 2.80 on the old cassette and the new cassette sits right at 2.8 as well so no major differences between the teeth of the new cassettes even though in my other video where i looked at the chain rings you could see that the teeth of the new crank sets are about 0.1 millimeter thinner we have the same 520% gear range, however, the gear spacing is better, so you might be tempted to install this new cassette on your old drivetrain. But remember, this cassette sits closer to the frame by 2.5 millimeters, and that is enough for the cassette to pretty much get jammed against the derailleur hanger. So once you tighten up your axle, the cassette is not gonna move anymore. It's just rubbing against the derailleur hanger, even though this is an UDH from SRAM. If you try to use the new chain on the old cassette, I would ask you why. The new chains are pretty expensive. So let me know in the comments below, why do you think that might be a good idea? Anyway, a lot of details about this. I hope I answer most of your questions, but if you have more, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, hope to see you guys on the trails. Why not running the new T-Type transmission? 
Cheers, guys. Cheers.